Hey everyone, Peaceman coming at ya. Recently on Twitter, I saw Dilmer's post about the Oculus interaction with the hand SDK. And I was like, I haven't actually spent a lot of time recently playing around with VR. Figured that might be a good excuse to actually try it off, pull the uh, the Quest uh, off the shelf and, and just mess around with the Unity SDK. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be showing here in this video. And actually doing that in the context of Web3 as well. Actually kind of doing what our logo says, bridging Web3 and the metaverse. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take that Oculus hand interaction SDK, get that up and running and show kind of briefly how that works. And then on a button interaction, we're gonna call the Fuse VR APIs. And by doing that, that's gonna enable us to connect our VR application to Web3 and the blockchain and at that point, you can call any of the APIs to do that. So I've, I've set up a very small demo showcase that we can go ahead and take a look at. And as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below or go ahead and ask over on Discord as well. So just like we looked at a couple of videos ago now, we have this Web3 Unity SDK. And a very nice part about this is it's just a wrapper around our crypto APIs that allow you to do email authentication, through Web3 and connect you to your MetaMask account. You can call just one login function and that's going to allow you to then authenticate against a user's wallet, allow them to prove that they own that wallet, at which point you can check for NFTs, ERC20s, et cetera, et cetera. And if you want more information, feel free to check a look at those previous videos that we've gone ahead and published. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull up Unity here really quick. This is their interaction sample that they recently introduced. So within their interactions, they have a few different samples here. We're gonna be specifically looking at their basic poke one. And what I'm gonna be actually doing is using the Quest and Airlink, I have hooked that up to my PC. So that's gonna allow us to just test all of this within the editor. And by doing so, we also know that it will go ahead and work once we deploy this as an APK and get that installed on the Quest. So you have a very seamless flow for development and you see have a very seamless flow for actually making sure that actually gets working up and running as a native build. I think that's kind of the neat part is in this specific case, we don't need to use the web. While I'm very bullish on WebXR and I'm very bullish on cloud streaming into WebXR, I totally understand that in today's market, native applications tend to, to work really well with consumers. So naturally makes sense to build native applications. This is our very simple scene that is provided by Oculus. You have a bunch of different things here set up. Basically, you get this for free by importing in the Oculus integration package, then going ahead and setting up either OpenXR, which we can quickly take a look at, or the Oculus player, which uh, is what I'm gonna go ahead and be using here. Using the XR plugin management, we're just gonna use Oculus. To, to do the quick testing. The way it's set up is in this specific case, because we're using basic poke, there's a bunch of different button UI UXs that you can play around with. So there's a button, there's a keypad. We also have kind of a scrollable canvas or, or just hover buttons. In this case, just again, for simplicity, we're gonna just use that red button showing you how you can press that and then trigger that login function. The nice part I would say about how they've integrated this interaction SDK is if I actually go down to the button, they've exposed this quite nicely with the Unity event system. So you can see the on hover event, you can see the on unhover event, as well as the selection events. So that's specifically what we've used here. You can see what I did is just added in an extra VR Web3 authentication. And that's pretty identical to the login script that we showed in our previous video. So if I go ahead and pull that up, this is the Fuse VR Web3. It was pulled in as a package from GitHub. So that's, that's very straightforward. If you actually just go to your package manager, add the Git package from URL, and then you just go ahead and copy this link in there, that will go ahead and get you the API again, like we showed last time. With that, all you need to do is import the FusePure Web3, create a very simple function. So let's call it Authenticate. We just put in an app ID again, while, while we're kind of in the midst of developing the app ID ecosystem, that's just kind of a dummy field for now, as well as an email address. In this case, I've just gone ahead and put in a dummy address, but you could put in a user's email address or whatever you like 
for, for that specific use case. Now, as I mentioned, this is a fake email address. However, in the context of Oculus, I don't think there's a way for you to actually get the logged in user's email address. So instead you'll have to rely on just letting the user type that, which is fine. You can say, use the same actually button system, create a keyboard, allow the user to type in their email address. For the purposes of this, what we're just going to highlight is, let's assume you got the email address, you could call the login function and then authenticate the user. And that's it. That's really all there is to actually go about authentication here. So why don't I go ahead and quickly pop into the quest. You can see my controllers wanna get activated. Let's go ahead, I'm going to hook into Airlink here. Give that a second to connect. And now that Airlink is active, I'll let me go ahead and click play. Awesome, so now let me go ahead and make this full screen here so that we can kind of see what's going on. As I mentioned again, a bunch of different buttons here uh, that we can touch, connect with whatever, right? Uh, and I'm trying to make sure I don't go and slam into anything too, <laughs> too specifically, right? This is using hand tracking. If we want, we have the controllers here, but I'm, I'm just gonna avoid that for now. Okay, hopefully this is a little bit better now and I'm gonna press the button. Now that I've pressed the button, I can go back into my temporary email address and there you see that I have gotten the Fuse VR Magic Link. With the Magic Link, I'm gonna go ahead and click Verify, which is going to send me to the Crypto APIs. Here, let's go ahead, connect to MetaMask, sign the random message, click Sign, and just like that, we have gotten our token back. And we should also have gotten that token here within our application to now authenticate. And now we can call any of the Fuse VR APIs. So if you want account balance, if you want ERC20, if you want NFTs, that's now accessible and exposed. And as we continue to add out more Fuse VR crypto APIs, you'll then be able to see the, the wider range of assets and, and controls and have a much more fluid experience interacting with the blockchain. That's it. I think that that really shows you again, the ability to call this from within VR. And that's really all there is to it. It's, it's really as simple as once you have a VR application, call login, that's going to get you a public key. Once you have the public key, you can go ahead and do whatever you want as far as reading the state of the blockchain. And you know that this user matches this wallet address. And as far as bridging between Web3 and the metaverse, I think that demo just there really highlights how this can all hook together in a very seamless way. And that's what's really exciting. So hopefully this kind of quick overview of how that works is helpful. If you're building out any VR applications that want the Web3 APIs, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, I think I'm gonna wrap this up here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing in.